its own melodies, call them light motifs, if you will. The characters in them have their own little three or four note figure that would come out frequently throughout that ghost story to help us stay on track dramatically. But once that ghost story is finished, bye-bye. We don't hear it again. Uh, the only people who do have themes for the whole show are, of course, Catherine Tucker Wyndham. Um, there's a melody for the little kids that are in the show, uh, which is based on one of the songs that they'll sing with Catherine. I don't know if there's a specific song that I'm proud of, but I'm really proud of the moods that I've captured musically for the stories. If I had to pick one that's really my favorite, I would think it's the, the story, the musical story of the Red Lady in Huntington. Um, because I have to depict madness, sadness, topically teenage taunting, um, and teenage suicide, musically, and still pull, pull it off. And that's an early 19th century song, so it has ragtime um, and a sense of period, but also a relevance to the sound of the music. It's just modern enough that we know it's now and not then. And I think that's the one I get the most feedback on from the actors who are in it. Yeah, I would have to say Red Lady in Huntington. There's uh, one of the ghost stories is told in Calypso. Uh, one of the ghost stories, uh, uh, the dancing ghost of Prancer Harrison is of course a barn mance. Perfect for it. Um, I think the only exception to the rule probably is uh, cover up the hole. And I forget what the name of the actual story, but it's the hole that would not be filled. It's the, uh, the oh, it's the ghost of Bill Skeeto. He he was hung for being a traitor during the Civil War and came back to haunt them, and he was too tall when they hung him, so they had to dig a hole underneath him. So his feet would dangle into the hole, and then he would die, and so he did, but the hole would never fill in. So for 30 or 40 years after that, every time they tried to fill in the hole, it would not fill in. That we're just telling sort of as a very vaudeville number. It's not really period to the Civil War. It's the only exception to the rule, except they get drunk as they keep trying to fill up this hole, so the number gets a little bit goofier and just a little bit off the beaten path and, and funny. So there's a quartet, it's sort of a, a Gone with the Wind 19th century drama, uh, a melodrama, so the music, while not being 19th century melodrama, with, with all due respect, I think I've run home to Andrew Lloyd Webber, and I've written a pastiche of Andrew Lloyd Webber melodrama, what he would have written if he had been writing a 19th century show, and Jeffrey, of course. And we don't ever say who Jeffrey is, where Jeffrey is, or when he's going to be around, but just like the theme from Jaws, all of a sudden you'll start to hear this melody and perhaps Jeff Freeze in the room. As far as starting a brand new piece, it's like it's like anything. I, I, I approach it, um, it's like what Catherine does, she tells stories. I tell stories, we all tell stories, but I do it in, in the, an art form that I've known and loved for a long time. 
So basically, it's sort of like a blank canvas for me, and I collect um, all the information that I can, um, the colors, if you will, and I go to the text, to the story itself, and just see how it all comes together. Um, um, but what I learned when I started this process was it was going to become more than just about the ghost stories. The real theme of the show is we're losing the ability to communicate and talk to each other. We don't talk to each other anymore. And what's going to happen and what are the ramifications of that going to be? And I think we're seeing it in our young people today with the texting and the computer messages and emailing. So this is a way for us to pay tribute to Catherine, but also to show, guys, we got to keep talking to each other. we got to keep telling oral histories. You know, this is part of who we are. And um, so this, really the show became much more than I'd ever intended it to become. But that's only because of Catherine. She's just, she's one of the most incredible people I've ever met. And she you knows she travels the world telling stories. And sitting at her dining room table and listening to her just talk and tell stories, I'm like, I'm, it's like an out-of-body experience. Everybody should have that privilege. So hopefully um, we've created a piece of entertainment that the whole family can enjoy. It's not scary. The one thing Catherine and I decided immediately, it's not going to be a horror show. There's a focus of the show on, on how important it is that we keep history alive, that we keep, and also keep telling stories to young people. As we get into this age where people will tell stories on their cell phones and people have dinners everywhere else but together, I think that's really the crux of what the story is about. And it's, it's beautiful what these guys have done, um, but it's also wonderful that Catherine said, I, can, I, I will allow you to let me be a character in the show, which is, I think, wonderful, because without that, we would have a review, basically, of just a bunch of stories. We have this, this wonderful character at the center of this piece based on a living author, author journalist, and um, I, think that's, I think that's pretty wonderful. Ms. Tucker Winden, that you allow us to do that. Because it's what's going to really make this show have a big part. I just hope that the book will, for generations, encourage young readers and older readers to give the ghost tales the respect they deserve. They are rich part of our heritage. It doesn't matter a bit whether you believe in ghosts or not. The important thing is that these stories have been told from generations generation. And, uh, and I believe the stories Margaret and I wrote, and they're true. The, we didn't make up anything in any of them. Those people really did exist, and they really did have experiences that we wrote about. First things happen. And you can't improve on the truth. I go into a classroom and they say, you going to show us some slides? And I say, no. You going to read us a story? No. Well, what you going to do? I'm going to tell you a story. But a, a different experience of them. Because storytelling was almost disappearing from our culture. Families didn't even tell stories. We used to tell stories in my family when I was growing up every night sit around the supper table, rocking on the front porch, in front of the fire, well time living on, and talk to each other. And families don't even talk to each other. Well, they go a week and the whole family will never be at the same place at the same time. And it robs of a great deal. Who we are. I know my ancestors because I heard my mother and father and aunts and cousins and so forth talk about it. I know who I 